When Casey Converse was retiring three years ago, his idea was that he would like the money that was raised kind of for his retirement to go to a team trip. And at the time, we had an officer rep named uh, Lieutenant Colonel Robin Kadau, and she was being transferred over to Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany. And that's where we really started the conversation. So then we had to raise money, of course, um, over the last couple years to, to bring that into fruition. And basically last year in August, I started making the plans to go in July of this year. It was a tremendous trip, tremendous experience for the cadets, A, being in a foreign country. Many of them had never been in a foreign country, so that's beneficial. B, being on an Air Force base. You know, they do that in, in unit operations where they go out to an Air Force base. Well, we were there on an Air Force base for a couple of weeks. Um, we are working with um, mostly, well, they were all Department of Defense kids or dependents on the swimming team and the clinics we were doing. Uh, you know, and, and most of those Air Force personnel kids and able to give back in that way. And so they went, 14 women and seven men with coaches and some staff on a two week journey that took them to four different countries in 12 days, not to mention swimming each weekday morning. Every morning we would uh, swim from seven to nine and then we had the swim clinic from nine to 11 and it ended up being like the perfect amount. So we got in really good shape, but then also the afternoons were left up to us to tour Germany. We got to go a bunch of different places, see a bunch of sites, and it was just the perfect balance of everything, I think. The daily clinics at Ramstein Air Force Base's pool gave the cadets an opportunity to teach their craft. Members of the Kingfish swim team were all ears, but the teachers may have been the ones learning the most. Everyone was like in stations, so I had starts and turns. Um, so every day, I didn't have like a group of set kids, I got to see all of them. So uh, one of the male swimmers and I would do starts and turns work with them, and it was just amazing every day to see them like grow and progress, because we would do like kind of the same type of stuff, and every day we got to see them grow, and it was just such a, it was such a cool opportunity, because they really wanted to work hard for it, and it's like a really nice, because I'm a senior now, so I, you know, my swimming's almost over, so it's really nice to see like someone starting up, it was like really poetic. One of the best things to help you master your sport and really learn how to do it better is when you can take what you know and turn around and teach it, especially little kids who aren't always the easiest to teach. Does it make you a better swimmer when you have to teach someone how to how to swim? It does because you're you're saying like, well, you really need to be doing this with your two hands. And then I think to myself, I'm like, I don't even do that. And like, then I would like go to practice the next day and be like, all right, now I actually got to work on it. Because the kids would be watching me swim and I was like thinking, if they don't see me do this, they're not going to do that and they're not going to respond. So it really does, it really makes you like self-conscious about not a bad way, but like a way that you really want to work for it. I did not expect the clinic to be as rewarding as it was going to be. Um, I really got a lot out of it. As Heidi like had said before, even with my own swimming, like you critique other people and then you realize that you don't even do half the stuff yourself. So that's definitely been a good thing coming back into this season. Practice and teaching is one thing, but competition really brings out the best in teams. The Falcons were able to get in two friendly competitions as well. On Thursday and Friday of the first week we were there, we had practice in the morning both days, and then we raced um, two German teams. Like uh, We raced like a younger team on Thursday, um, and it was really cool because a lot of them didn't even speak English, but we actually went out to dinner after with them, and it was almost like someone coming here and um, you're trying to like explain to them like everything that's going on but you also like can't speak their language and so it was really cool that they were giving like a big effort to explain everything to us um, so that was really neat and then the second day we went to um, the actual like German Olympic Training Center and raced with their national team and they were super fast um, but that was also really cool to just kind of see where you stand against a national team. On weekends, wounded warriors took over the Ramstein pool, so it was time for sightseeing, and they got plenty done in limited time. They got to see Bastogne, Belgium. We visited a bunch of World War II sites, which um, was really, really good for them to see, and especially as we are military members, to be able to see those kind of things. We went to Luxembourg. That was amazing. I felt like I was in the movie The Princess Diaries the whole time. And then finally we got France in and went to Strasbourg, France, which for them to kind of see like a mini Paris, it didn't have an Eiffel Tower, but it did have a Notre Dame Cathedral, had a very Parisian feel to it. And so I think they really enjoyed that as well. And we, with Strasbourg, we really got to see um, 
you know, kind of a historical site that had changed hands between Germany and France multiple times and took a canal tour. And Strasbourg, a lot of people don't know, is really important in the European Union today. So we kind of even got to be kind of present day. So everything had kind of a historical nature to it. Strasbourg, France was probably my favorite. Um, <clears throat> we did this riverboat tour there and it was just incredible seeing all these different little villages and towns alongside the river. And then the one town that we went through, Strasbourg, it, um, it was just, it felt like I was on the set of Beauty and the Beast. You know, like a little French village, uh, baguettes everywhere for like a euro. And they were some of the best bread I've ever tasted. And crepes, I had like this delicious crepe lunch. It was just one of the coolest places I've ever been. Strasbourg, France, um, that was beautiful. I've never been to France before, but I've always wanted to go. And yeah, Coach Murphy was right when she said it was like very Parisian. I mean, I've never been there, but I assume that's what it felt like. Um, the Notre Dame Cathedral was amazing, and the food was great. I had this like pizza thing that was very French and had bacon and just amazing cheese. Their cheese is amazing, sorry. Their cheese is fantastic everywhere in Europe. It's so pure. We got to eat Belgian waffles in Belgium, so that was a pretty neat thing to say that you've done. Um, but all of them were cool and like they're unique ways. Um, the gelato was really good there and it also was cheaper than buying a bottle of water. Fun fact, yeah. Along the way, former Falcon swimmers who are now serving in the Air Force met up with their party, which gave these cadets a different look at serving the country. There was three women and two men alumni and they showed up to practices and came down to the pool and took us out to lunch and talked to us like basically about anything um, and I think that a lot of us got a lot of information out of it as far as like what um, career choices we would want to possibly go into. When you when you go here you kind of get bogged down with like cadet life you kind of focus on the day-to-day -day and like you don't really look at anything past being a cadet um, but once you like you see alumni in their actual like like environment it's actually it's it's a incredible thing to see because they get to talk to you. We met um I met a major he was a swimmer and he was a grad from I don't even know what year, but he talked to me about the C-130s because that's what I was really interested in flying. And I got to talk to him about C-130s and then our casual lieutenant, that was when I was a freshman, she was um, she was a first year lieutenant. And it was just amazing to see her come, like even in the few years that she's been in the Air Force, how far she's come in her career and how much she enjoys it. So it's really, um, it's a positive thing to see all these people like really enjoying their, their Air Force career. In all, the trip helped these athletes to bond as teammates, train when they normally wouldn't have been able to, and develop as future officers, the exact three goals the coaches were hoping to accomplish. Well, I, I don't want to say that it's obvious, but um, I definitely feel really good in the water, so better than I did last year, for sure. I am a lot farther ahead in my training than I even felt I was after basic, so I think this season is looking good for us. Once you bond with like other team, like other teammates, then everyone else kind of, especially the incoming freshmen, they can really see like a very bonded team and then they want to be a part of that. Um, so it makes us closer knit and then once you're closer knit you want to start pushing each other and you want to start working harder. So it's just kind of like this like cascading effect of like building that team, like that teamwork atmosphere and then just going from there and having integrating the freshmen with it. The two weeks literally not leaving each other's sides you know, it just brings you that much closer together. And that's just really huge going into a new season. It's definitely something that I think is a huge difference maker in our program. And I'm glad we, were had, we had the chance to do it. Big thanks again to Coach Murphy, who really um, did the lion's share of this. And, and we have friends over in Germany. Um, you know, Ben, Sarah, thank you. you. You know who you are. 